Hello fellow tarot readers, tarologists and tarot aficionados and welcome to Let's Talk Tarot. We are on our tour through the Major Arcana and we are now at the 11th card of the Major Arcana which is Strength or La Force. So go make yourself a cup of tea, get your deck out and get ready as we explore this card together. Welcome back guys. So if you remember at the end of the last episode, I said something along the lines of, we could be doing one of two different cards today. Um, and of course I was making a reference to the renumbering that's happened in the Rider Waite Smith system. So the eight and the 11th in Rider Waite Smith tarot, as well as anything that is associated or, or based on that system of tarot has switched the number eight and the number 11 around. So we did justice as number eight and strength as 11, but in the Rider Waite Smith system, they are switched around. So when you see this card, you will notice that the number eight is on it and not the number 11. Go with it, it was switched. <laughs> um, if you read the pictorial guide to the tarot by Arthur Edward Waite, he ex mentions that he's made that switch and he kind of says it's personal preference, it was personal taste, it shouldn't really bother you too much as readers. Um, and doesn't really kind of explain the reasons why he's a little bit shifty. And the reasons why he was being shifty is it's based on the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn teachings, which of course were secret. When it came to their use of the tarot, they associated every single one of the 22 major arcana with the 22 Hebrew letters. That allowed them to be able to use the tarot in a Kabbalistic way and associate it with the, the tree of life, the, the Kabbalistic tree of life, or the Ots Shim. That didn't work too well. There was a couple of things that didn't quite fit beautifully. So in order to fit it better, they switched the eight and the 11 around. Because these are private and secret teachings back then, and they weren't published by Israel Regardi at that time, Arthur Edward Waite decides to be a little bit shifty about the reasons why he's done that. There's an awful lot of the teachings that he didn't put into the tarot that were later done by Alistair Crowley in his Thoth deck, but in the Rider Waite Smith, this is only one of the main ones that he kind of does that hints at those secret teachings, but he's too reluctant to say that it's based on secret hidden teachings that he can't talk about. So as such, he kind of says it's personal taste and it shouldn't really bother you. It doesn't make much difference. Um, it does in terms of the numerology and it does make a bit of a change. But if you've got one of those tarot decks, know that it is Kabbalistic associations and correspondences that has meant that those have been reordered. So that was by way of a short explanation, but of course that took about three minutes. So sorry about that. Let's jump straight back into Taming Lions with the Strength card. Um, for those of you that are new to this, uh, these videos, please subscribe below. Um, but also I use two different tarot decks to show these videos. I'm gonna do this very quick because we have now done it about 11 times. Um, I use this tarot deck, which is a Tarot de Marseille based tarot deck. Tarot de Marseille is a French school or tradition of tarot that stems from the 1600s and 1700s. This specific deck is a restoration of the 1760s Nicholas Conver deck with a couple of alterations and minor alter uh, changes. This was done by Chris Hadar and it's called the Veritable Tarot de Marseille. There's a link to it below if you want to order it. Here we're using the Rider Waite Smith, the RWS deck. This was by artist Pamela Coleman Smith. You can see her little signature here. And it was under the commission and directorship of Arthur Edward Waite, who we were just talking about and was a member of the Golden Dawn, as well as other occult schools and esoteric practices. 
He directed to the development of these cards based on hidden teachings and private teachings of those occult schools. So quite a lot of the symbolism and symbols in these cards are based on those secret teachings. So they're quite occult in, in the way that they are read. So most cards, if you've got a tarot deck, it will be mostly based on one of those two traditions, either the French school of tarot, that was mostly developed for, for playing card games and later kind of attributed with occult meanings and uh, esoteric definitions, or it will be based on this Rider Waite Smith system. There is technically a possibility that your tarot card deck will not refer to one of these two cards, and that is because your artist or designer has decided to do something slightly different and not be fitted into the boundaries of tradition and explore something on their own. That's completely fine. You, everything I say in these videos will still apply to that tarot card and its interpretation. However, some of the small little fine details that I'm gonna point out may not apply on the card that you've got in front of you. For example, you might not have a lion. You might have something completely different. <laughs> um, the That, I think, pretty much explains everything I wanted to talk about here. I might bring in a, another card occasionally, but those are the two main decks that I use. And there are links below in my descriptions for those. As you can see, we have got the number eight here, as we talked about. Cool. So, uh, going back then, let us talk about the name. It is La Force, or Strength in the French, and Strength in the English versions. It doesn't normally have a lot of variations, but occasionally it is given the name of Fortitude, which comes from the Latin meaning strength. Fortitude is a cardinal virtue. It is one of the three of the four cardinal virtues that are shown in the tarot, the other one being justice and another one being temperance. So we've done justice, we are still to do temperance, and there is the missing prudence, which some say may be in the tarot and so others say isn't and is excluded. Uh, we'll talk about that in another different video on, on where prudence could be. <laughs> Maybe she's just gone off to do something. Um, so here we have a cardinal virtue. We've got one of the four virtual vir virtues. Fortitude is about showing strength, but not physical strength. It is not about brute strength or muscular strength. It is not about being physically strong. It is about showing strength of character, strength of personality. Fortitude is seen as the virtue uh, in the face of adversity. It's the virtue of adversity. So when someone is faced with something that is problematic or challenging, fortitude is the virtue that they rely on to see themselves through it. It is also the virtue about um, sh habit and morality, showing the correct use of ma uh, morality in those times of crisis. It's, it's about character strength. So we're talking a lot more about internal strength, not external strength. And I think that that's really well shown in this card. So we have, some people say that this is a, a, a woman closing the mouth of a line. Here in the Tarot de Marseille, it looks like she's opening that, that mouth but some of the French occultists still refer to it as her closing the mouth of the lion. And that is her showing strength in a kind of a symbolic way. Here, very clearly, the Rider Waite Smith deck shows her closing the mouth. In fact, in the pictorial key to the tarot, um, Arthur Edward Waite talks about her not opening or closing the, the lion's mouth, which is obviously against what this card depicts. And that is because the Golden Dawn's secret tarot that they had for the private members only showed this woman standing beside the lion after subduing the lion. So his, his description of this card doesn't actually correlate with Pamela Common Smith's artistry, which is actually pretty common uh, when you look at the definitions and, and the, the meanings in the pictorial guide to the tarot, uh, pictorial key to the tarot, he doesn't quite align himself with his own tarot deck, which I find problematic. But that's because the, the, the secret 
tarot of the, the, the Golden Dawn members, had this woman standing beside the lion, and this lion was tamed. He was he was completely closed. It was after this. So we're kind of talking about like a stage later <laughs> when she's done this with the lion. So let us talk about the number before we kind of start going on to the symbols. We are at the number 11 and as we know anything beyond 10 gets reduced down by something called theosophic addition. So we have 1 and 1, 11, 1, 10 and 1 unit. 1, 1 equals 2. So this corresponds to the number 2 being passive, being feminine, being before growth or before um, before coming out of that, that kind of immaterial chaos. Um, so if you would like more information about the, the numerology, you can go and have a look at the High Priestess card uh, where I talk about the twos. In particular addition to this, we have one higher than one because we are on the tens and this is the first card into the, the tens. Uh, without the zero at the end. So we have one higher than one, which also aligns it to the magician. And there is some links to the magician in the imagery, which I will talk about when I come to the symbols. The other thing that this can refer to is you can get 11 from the addition of five and six. Five is the pentagram and six is the seal of Solomon, the six sided, um, the six pointed star. Both of these symbols, when I talked about the numerology, had a balance to them. If you remember, I talked about the five points of the pentagram could be this way or could be reversed with a single point at the bottom. And that showed the kind of two uh, natures of, of humankind or two natures of, of spirituality. Either the material subverts the, the, the spiritual and the material becomes more important, like we see later on in the Devil card or the point is at the top and therefore spirit rules over the material and then we kind of get the reference to the Pope card. But they're still very, very human natures. We're still talking about the human idea of the, the spiritual rather than the spiritual itself. So that more of that is in the handout on the Hierophant for the Patreon users or go and have a quick look at the Hierophant tarot card for a bit better explanation of that. The other thing is that that six, the, the, the seal of Solomon or the six pointed star, shows the active and passive combined. So similarly to the, 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 the pentagram where we've got the upright and the reversed, we've got two interlocking triangles, one of the active and one of the passive. So there's a lot about balance here. There's a lot about keeping things in balance and keeping things in, in combination of opposites. And that is also reflected in the imagery. We've got this balance between this being here and this being here, and which one's more dominant and which one's more passive. So we've got this balance. At the moment that this is captured as an image, we can see that they're actually pretty in balance. We can see that the line has still got its mouth open or slightly closed, depending on whether you see it opening or closing. And we have this woman calmly disposed to, to control it. So those are the only things that I kind of want to talk about in the number. You can see the 11 in different ways, um, but that's the only thing that I kind of wanted to point out before we make that numerology way too long and cover things that we've already done. So let us look at the symbols. I'm going to start with this card and I'm going to start with drawing over it um, for those of you that kind of enjoy it like me. So let me just jump you down here. Once again, as always, this tarot card on the screen is the Pierre Madini deck, um, which is the 1709 deck. Um, I'm just getting my drawing tablet working. Here we go. Um, so it's tarot de Massé based, and there's very few differences between the, the tarot that I've got on my desk and, and this very early version. The main thing that I want to point out is the hat here. Here we can see this shape here, which may, some of you may remember was also in the the magician. So this is the the lemniscuit or the figure of eight on its side in hat form. 
This is the symbol of infinity. It could be seen as what is infinite, the, the, the spiritual realms or that of spiritual or that of the divine. Um, or it could be seen as life, you know, the, 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 the eternity of life, the, the, the fact that things kind of get born, die and reborn and die and reborn and so on and so forth um so you can see it either as life or that connection to the divine and here we have linked this person to some sort of divine virtue the divine spirit or or a kind of a, a force of life what's different from this and the magician card is how this hat is this hat is a lot more complex than the one in the magician you can see here these little spiky um, crown bits. I'm just going to circle it for those that can't see my cursor. Um, so this little crowny bit kind of shows that she's accomplished something. She's got a crown, she's got a coronet, and that is slightly more further on than the magician did. The magician just had a floppy hat. Um, so we here recognize that there is some sort of kingship or some sort of rulership and that rulership is one over her, her internal emotions and eternal disposition and we see that because she is fortitude she is about that control and about that, that um, strength of character cool so that's the only major one that I wanted to point out there. So let us jump back to seeing it on the table. You can see that she is looking ahead. Yeah. So she is looking to the future. She is looking to the next card, which is the hanged man. And there she is about that control. So we have a woman that is opening or closing depending on how you want to see it this lion figure this lion figure is located near this woman's pelvis um, so we can see it as her showing strength and fortitude over i don't want to say baser but uh bodily more animal instincts and what um Freud would kind of see as the id those kind of impulses and this is kind of also about fortitude you know those impulses might be a flight and fight response it might be to instantly react to the situation it might be to you know uh, show um, a lack of control it might be you know those those baser instincts those things that are animal about us because you know humans are animals and putting it under control with this very divine figure you know this link to the divine here is putting this this figure is kind of almost divine this almost angelic if you will i mean i know she doesn't have angels but there is this angelic higher order to her so she is the conscious mind and he, this this line becomes the unconscious or the subconscious especially in terms of drives desires and those kind of things. So fortitude here is about the control of uh, baser instincts or baser concerns uh, by using the, the, the skill of fortitude and, and moving ahead, looking ahead. Sometimes uh, I find that when reading this card and it appears upside down, this is about the imbalance. This is talking about how uh, a person is reacting a situation without kind of showing any conscious control or whether it is about letting uh, habits or um, baser instincts rule so this could be one of letting uh, <laughs> your loins doing the talking uh, for finding a partner in relationships it could be about um, that fight and flight response if, if we're talking about the world of, of careers it could be about greed those kind of aspects are out of control with what controls them this this kind of morality this this higher level plane so we can see it as that and that's what I tend to see it as in in most readings this this kind of combining control and it's important to say that this is a balance it's not a complete subjugation it is about the ability to balance those conscious and those mor morality bases with uh, your instincts your needs your desires 
um, not about one of complete subversion. She is not beating her lion. She is not killing her lion. She is calmly um, and quite lovingly in a way uh, controlling her lion. Lion could be a metaphor for anything. What it is not is what is in this card. It is not beating your lion. <laughs> I am kind. Of, this is an earlier card for those of you that don't watch this channel. This is uh, the Visconti Sforza deck from the the 1450s. It's a hand painted deck based on a set of twelve hand uh, commissioned decks from the Visconti family in Italy. Um, so this depicts a a person beating the hell out of their lion or whatever that animal is. Um, I can only see it as a medieval lion, really. But um, this has moved on from beating your lion. We are now into loving your lion, understanding your lion, empathizing with your lion, and subduing it gently um, by using one's fortitude. Anyway, so so away from beating one's lion, let's, let's move back. Um, so let's take a quick look at here in the Rider Waite Smith. Obviously, we've got the number eight, not number 11. Um, and you can use the, the number eight numerology that we were talking about with Justice, aligning this with the second card in the um, the series, the um, the first card in the series, rather, for the, the September reason, etc. Um, but anyway, let's, let's move on with the images. We've got this wonderful woman with the Lemniska, the figure of eight on its side, implying eternity, which we do see in the magician as as strongly as this in the Rider Waite Smith as well. So we've got that link to the, the magician and link to her being kind of like a force of nature or a, a, a divine thing. And we've got all these beautiful flowers. And once again, we're seeing this red and white that Pamela Coleman Smith is very, very uh, big on and this red and white is a link once again to the magician um, but we've got this cord of flowers and Arthur Edward Waite, a Waite, kind of talks about this as being the, the divine yoke, the sweet yoke, um, light burden of divine law he calls it. So what he means here is this this yoke, not yoke Y-O-L-K, like an egg yolk, but yolk is in an oxen yolk, Y-O-K-E, um, or a lead, you know, seeing that this is tied around the, the lion's neck, which I imagine it probably was in the secret Order of the Golden Dawn um, tarot, personal tarot cards. Here it's not so much, but we can see that this being wrapped around, and that is the taming of one's lion, um, baser instincts, uh, inner willpower, inner morality, inner drives, whatever you want to see that lion as, um, in accordance to divine law that divine law being higher level morality. So law that is coming from the divine could be seen as like the Ten Commandments, but it could also be seen as something intuitive, like living one's life in service and in servitude, like we saw in the Hermit just before. So those divine laws and living one's baser instincts, aligning one's baser instincts in line with divine law is what this, this flowery yoke is about. We see her closing the mouth very clearly, keep shutting the mouth of, of our instincts, keeping um, the mouth of our instincts from talking for us. Yeah, um, so we see that. So the way I phrase it is, it is subjugation, not suffocation of the lion. We're putting the lion in control of, of our higher aspects and our higher being. Uh, without having to suffocate it or killing it. You know, we can see this by the, 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 the calm repose. And there's something that is very calm about this card. It is about that, that outwardly calm, but maybe in a turmoil. So there is this state of balance that's happening internally, but on the external, we, we see this, this very refined pose. I sometimes refer to this as kind of swanning it. Um, and the idea of that is that swans glide across the surface of the water and they look all elegant and pretty but underneath the water their little legs must be kind of like going like this to paddle along so there is this external symbol of serenity and calm but 
an inner kind of battle and inner turmoil um and that i see kind of in a lot of areas of life where you're putting on a kind of a face that doesn't necessarily show that struggle and this is kind of about fortitude we're, we're looking at fortitude in the face of adversity we're looking at strength even though things are tough um and kind of showing that strength of character and that determination and tied up with uh being habitually um strength strong of character it's not like a one-off uh fortitude is about showing that consistently through adversity cool so let me jump back oh and we've got black screen ah there you go um so wonderful so the, the the few meanings here let's go move on to the meanings i think we've kind of looked at these cards enough we, we do see this point here this this peak that we do see in the sixth the the, the um uh the, the lovers card we see this peak between the two lovers um and here we see it on the left you can read into that and you can kind of have a look at that but i'm going to just leave it for today because i don't have a personal understanding of it in, in the lovers i see that as kind of like unity coming together um for a <laughs> a mountainous erection um here it's it's kind of slightly different but it, there is about a unity a singularity a, a, a coming together so the strength is about not physical strength it's about strength from contemplation we've come from cards that mean contemplation we've come from the hermit we've come from the justice uh, so we're talking here about the strength that comes from that reflection and that contemplation we are also seeing this energy uh, this card is a lot of energy and a lot of power there is a lot of well strength you know there's a lot of strength in this card and that comes from internal strength and internal power things that might not be aware of on this on the surface of things and might not be present on the surface but actually there's a lot of grit and determination in in this card so where this comes up in um business or careers there's an awful lot of driving force there's an awful lot of getting to it so as an advice card it's telling you to control those those inner desires and find that balance between um showing fortitude and and showing personal determination or just drive like we see in in, in the chariot chariot is about driving forward here we're seeing like that internal discipline and that internal moving forward so it's kind of saying you know make sure that one is showing the the, the virtue of fortitude uh that things may come up that that is is are challenging or, or problematic but just show your strength of moral character through them as a kind of a situation card it is kind of saying that there will be some sort of success that they, we are going towards a promotion we're going towards a successful thing in the world of of careers um and, and not to be too concerned but just to show that that moral fiber um it also is to do with um control and inner inner turmoil and inner temptations so this could refer to the like impulses to to for for bad habits i suppose like for example alcoholism controlling alcoholism or anything that's that's causes one to step away from one's fortitude uh, and follow those baser instincts especially if this is reversed it's kind of saying that those habits those those impulses are out of control with the your your, your moral fiber your your character um so it can be talking about that but it also shows that there is an awful lot of inner turmoil that might be happening under the surface so if this comes up for a client it could be talking about that there's a lot of internal fighting going on in order to show this out outward strength um, so inner turmoil could be a, a sign of this card it does say that there's more internal turmoil than is being shown on the external i.e that even though the client is feeling a lot of internal battles that's not present to anyone else that's, that's that's around them they don't necessarily see that they see a person that is calm and reposed and that might be a good thing or a bad thing it could be something like go away and ask for help especially if this comes up with something like the nine uh, of swords or even the ten of swords um like 
you're putting on a brave face and you're not asking for help but it could also be about um in a good way that things that look like they're really really struggling for you like for example public speaking is not coming across to to other people around you for example your audience um, so you may feel really nervous but actually you're not coming across as nervous to anyone else so it's, it's about inner turmoil but how that kind of is put across to the external um, the other things is inner strength yep courage courage is a big one so obviously we called fortitude uh, the strength in adversity the virtue of adversity uh, and that's courage you know the, the line here symbolizes courage quite clearly we, we say we don't <laughs> other than um other than this certain film uh we we don't call it a cowardly lion we see a lion as a symbol of courage and and moving forward even though the adversity and courage comes from within and once again interestingly linked courage is not necessarily what's going on the internal it's what's seen from the external so people that show a lot of courage often say that they were very nervous internally that they weren't um one feeling very courageous or very brave but their actions are judged brave because they still acted in the face of adversity so for example someone going out in space uh, for a space voyage they might see it as a very nervous time of their life but it's still a very brave act because despite what was going on internally this internal turmoil they still went forward with it they still moved forward and that's another aspect of this card, especially psychologically, that you can kind of draw out, is that courage is about moving forward despite feelings of fear and putting feelings of fear, squishing the mouth of them, and still moving ahead and doing what you need to do. Um, so you can read this as courage, either as a flat blanket, you've got courage, or go into the details of that, of courage is about still acting even if you are scared or still acting even uh, despite feeling scared um, so those are a few meanings and a few definitions of strength strength is a easy card to understand but it's a very difficult card to kind of get on a deeper level because on the surface of things we're talking about internal power and power of character and strength but on this underside of that, not an awful lot of people are able to do that habitually to the point where we would, would say that they show real fortitude and strong of character. So it's one of those that is very easy to talk about in terms of keywords like courage, strength, but actually in practice when we kind of come to show those, those characteristics and that virtue, they're pretty hard and they're pretty struggling and difficult so as a reader when we're coming and approaching this card try to put yourself in mind of a situation where you have shown that fortitude look at your life and try to understand what that was like and how, what the lived experience of that was because that will better allow you to understand the energy of this card not as a surface reading of it means courage but understand that deep level of it is courage but you may feel scared and that inner turmoil and that inner problems that are derived by this card even though the external looks very very simple it is a picture of a very serene person controlling a line but what's going on internally for that that being is also very important there's one other thing that i have forgotten to say that i'm just going to make a quick mention of the last thing is the title of this card does not necessarily talk about this person or this lion it talks about the relationship between them um, so we are talking about the relationship on strength between this being that can be seen as slightly divine uh, or, or embodying or personifying that virtue and this lion symbolizing our kind of animal instincts and base strength and it is that relationship between them and that relationship is what we manage and control and it's not this and it's not this and that kind of brings me back to that we don't suffocate our lion we subjugate it uh, we put it under control and it's about that balance between the two sorry 
let me go back then. Um, now I've said that, um, so understanding what that this card means really requires you as a reader to step beyond the little face of this card and try to understand deep down the feelings and the, the turmoil that can kind of come out of this card as a stage. We are of course looking at a process. We are now at the 11th card, which is halfway through the tarot. So we have done an awful lot of work to get up to this point. So it's not a very easy, quick card to understand, even if our definition is very short. So by the word of fortitude, it might be quite easy to understand as a definition, but doing that extra work of internalizing that meaning and understanding it in the context of the time where you have shown that personal fortitude, especially in uh, against adversity, will help you to be able to read this card better for yourself and better for your clients if you are reading for other people. So I hope that's helped. That has talked about the number, the meaning, the symbolism, and the hidden images in this card quite well. Um, if there are any problems with that, or you would like a little bit more information, please drop a message below in the comments. I do check them. Uh, for those of you that do support me on Patreon, thank you very much. Um, your, your support means the world to me. There will be a handout for this when you get access to this video, which is a week before everyone else. So you have a normally around about a 10 to 12 page cheat sheet with all this information plus some extra stuff that I've, I've found and researched for you to help you interpret this card and print off and write notes over it furiously. For those of you that don't support me on Patreon, it is a fantastic way of buying me a digital cup of coffee as well as me giving you a load of free stuff and extra stuff um, for your tarot journey as well as other things. Um, so please consider doing so. I hope that's been helpful and been meaningful to you um, and please stay tuned for the next video which is the 12th card or the hanged man. Thank you very much for your time, take care, bye.